Hey, you wild nomads and film enthusiasts. It's your hostess with the most in Slogan Myers, my good mate over there, my partner in crime. What's your name? Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave with us tonight. We're the Cinefellas boys, and it's getting to be a wild Thursday night. We're getting a little too wild on a school night. But tonight, we're going to be talking about a brand new dramatic film. And if you guys have been watching our YouTube channel the past few weeks, we've been reviewing WandaVision. We just reviewed A24 St. Maud, really great horror flick. But tonight we're going on the opposite side of the spectrum in terms of films and talking about a drama that was just released on Hulu. And we're talking about Nomadland. Ooh. Nomadland. Yes. Finally comes home for people to see. I think it was on video on demand digital for a while there. I missed it there. But yeah, now it's being picked up by the streamers for everybody to see. And, you know, I'd heard a lot of good buzz about this film. Uh, I knew that it was, you know, within it was getting awards recognition, everything like that, saying Francis McDormand was great and everything. So I wanted to see it for myself. You know, I didn't know what it was about, really. Nomads, obviously, but I hadn't really seen anything about it. And uh, I just went in fresh. Absolutely. I didn't really know much about this either. I just knew Francis McDormand was in it and she's one of my favorite actresses. Yeah, betcha then. Yeah. Yeah. But- Man, I still love Fargo. That's like one of my all-time, probably top 20 movies of all time. But she's so great. Everything she plays yeah. in. Three Billboards a couple years ago. She's yeah. a phenomenal actress. And this time around, she's playing Fern. Basically, I think this takes place in two, 2008, isn't it? The Great Recession. Yeah, yeah. 2008. This lives in a small town, Nevada. Never heard of it. And um, she works at this place. And basically, the whole town turns into a ghost town. All the businesses go out of business, and she's like one of the last few people there, and she eventually embarks on this journey after her husband passes away and has nothing. So she's struggling with a lot, and she goes on this trip, and it sets up the rest of the movie. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's very emotional from the get-go, really. You see, like, how everything's affected her. You see her working in, like, you know, in this factory. Um, she's working for Amazon within the movie. She's like a packager. She packages, you know, boxes and stuff and sends it out through the big Amazon facility. So you see her in actual interactions with her coworkers and everything. And, and it just looks like the whole movie really looks like she's just talking to her actual friends. Like you forget that it's a movie, actually. That's how I really watched it. It looked more like a documentary. Yeah, it was more authentic. It didn't feel like acting. It felt like very true to like a relationship, friendship. And people she interacts with at work and then where she goes from one job to the next. She does like temp jobs or whatever she can basically find to make money to live in a van out in the desert. (laughs) Live out in the desert. Basically, she's a nomad moving from place to place. RV parks, you know, random places off the side of the road. Ending up in beautiful places in Nevada. Reminding me much of living out there and getting lost in the desert, how peaceful it is. And you see the people in this movie that live out there that enjoying life, enjoying the earth, enjoying being in the desert. So it's really fantastic the way these people live. And they have a lot of different reasons why they live that way. Yeah, a lot of them have moved on. A lot of them have experienced some things like Fern experienced losing a job um, after so many years, kind of not having any money. What do, what do you do? You know, you can't afford a, you can't afford the mortgage anymore. You can't, you know, what do you do? Some people, you know, it happens that they go homeless. Some people say, you know, I'm not going to let that happen and grab a van and they figure it out. You know, they live off the land. They figure things out. And that's what Fern does in this film. She, you know, packed up everything and she now she's on. It's it's a very personal, reflective journey for the character of Fern through the, throughout this film. They go about this in two different ways. One being you want to be free. You want to live a peaceful life. You get rid of everything, sell everything, go move, live in an RV or a van and travel from place to place. Other, the other reason being people losing everything, not having money. So they have to live in their van, their car and move around to survive. So it's a really great outlook of the way that America, this is an American story, you know, things that we're, we're dealing with in the country and people are dealing with this is a real issue. Absolutely. Yeah. It's based, I think this uh, movie is based on a book that was written. Um, That's right. I can't remember the author's name. Uh, Jessica Bruder. Jessica Bruder. And yeah, you know more about it than me. I just had seen that the other day, actually, that it was a book. I didn't really know. Like I said, I didn't know anything about the film before I saw it. Yeah, the book was put out in 2017. It's like four years ago. It's a really critically acclaimed book, uh, really well done, and really 
great story of these people, real people that um, Fern comes across in the film that have been living out in the road for a long time in their cars. And she really gains this relationship with them, take and look at life in America, especially for older people that are retired or you know, somebody passes away. Usually it's older people and what they're struggling with. Trying to work at Amazon, I couldn't imagine being 60 years old working in a warehouse. Right. It's so like, tough on your body, you know? Yeah, just kill it after a while. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't imagine. But yeah, it's uh, it's an authentic look for sure. And the the just the performances by the other people that she comes in contact with, these are all real people. And actually, uh, Chloe Chloe Zhao's uh, film from a couple of years ago, I think it was 2017, The Writer. Actually, all those people, you didn't know it. Like they didn't even say anything. They didn't market it as what it was. You didn't find out until the very end in the credits that everybody was an actual person. There weren't any. You know, there might have been a couple actors, but most of them were real people. And uh, Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. So I'm definitely interested in checking it out after seeing this movie, for sure. I like the whole, like, directorial vibe. You know, like, she has her own kind of outlook in the film. Very unique, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's very personal, just like how the camera's always on Fern. It's always from kind of her perspective, you know, but you're you're stepping back, you're looking at her, but you feel like you're right there with her, you're walking with her. Um, yeah, she. there's a lot of scenes where it's just her by herself kind of reflecting, just looking off in the distance. And I thought those uh, moments in the film were just as powerful as the, as the ones with the relationships she makes with these people. But yeah, several of those uh, ladies that she came into contact with you know, you really felt like they were friends for sure. Like it, it, nothing seemed like it was acting. It was just, it was very real. I don't know, everything about this movie really just. Yeah, like a true friendship and the people that she comes across throughout the film are all unique, but they all kind of share this personal bond of being on the road, being nomads. And you don't really have anybody else. You're moving from place to place, but you kind of see the same people and you become a family and they really show that how authentic that is closeness yeah. of everybody in this community. Yeah. It's really same relationships formed. Uh, there's, there's one guy that's kind of like the leader of the, uh, the camp. Um, you see him in the beginning um, when she's kind of looking at these communes, she sees a video of this guy, but she ends up meeting him and like, they have a really powerful discussion. Like they have several in the film, but like towards the end, their last like talk they had together was, one of the big moments for the film as far as her journey and what she was going to do after, you know, how she was going to deal with her husband's death after all these years. And then, of course, we meet Dave in the film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. David Strathairn. <laughs> yeah. And we've seen him in a lot of things. He's a big, you know, he's a big, like, supporting actor. You've seen him in a lot of movies, a lot of shows over the years. For some odd reason, I thought he was in a movie like in the 90s with Kevin Bacon, like the <laughs> river runs wild or whatever it was. Oh, were you thinking about uh, maybe I, you're thinking Kevin Klein? No, that's a different one. River no, runs a river no, runs through it? I don't know. One of those movies is Kevin Bacon's all psychotic. They're on like a, a boating yes. trip. Anyways, but yeah, he's like the love interest. Fern's husband kind of passes or does pass away when she's getting through life and kind of making her journey, embarking on this journey throughout the, the Wild West. And she comes across this guy a few times, a few different stops, and he's working at this park, and they hit, out, hit it off of this conversation. They really like each other, and you can kind of see the relationship grow throughout the film, even though she's still trying to overcome the death of her husband. Yeah, it's never an outright relationship form like they're actually going out in the film they just have scenes together where you can sh where you can tell that they definitely like each other and there's chemistry there but fern's not anywhere in the she's not thinking about getting together with anybody else she's still grieving the loss of her husband uh so yeah but they have a lot of cool scenes together like they did that little dance where they first met yeah and uh yeah and just their little talks and they have an understanding it together it's kind of like it's kind of like they are in a relationship, but not really. They're just close, but she's not ever going to like fully, fully do, you know, commit to it, basically. She's not ready for that. Right. And Frances McDormand, she's always very intimidating. She's got that face like a lady I wouldn't want to mess with. So she kind of yeah. comes off like that in the film, too, with uh, this Dave guy. He's going to push back, you know. They had a few instances where he, he broke some of her stuff and she kind of snapped on him. And mm -hmm. she's definitely a woman I wouldn't want to mess with. And she's 
absolutely like that in the movie. Yeah, her performance is great. Yeah, she she's yeah. You can just by looking at her, you can tell like man, she's been through some stuff. She just plays that so well. Just like all of her life experiences, and then you know she puts it into acting, and that's like what comes out of it. Is is pretty awesome. I love yeah, I love it. I love this performance. Is great. Yeah, another powerhouse performance, another award-winning performance. I think she's definitely a good contender come Oscar season, I think in April. Keep talking about this without talking about the cinematography. It's absolutely beautiful in this film. We have Joshua James Richards, which is a frequent collaborator with Chloe Zhao in other films. Really great cinematographer. You know, you got the wide shots, the beautiful landscapes of the canyons and the mountains out in the desert, which is really like a character in the film. It's just like not just the backdrop, but it plays a big part, the overall vibe and feel they're going for in this film. And um, just the way it's shot all over the different states on the Wild West, I thought it was just really beautiful, uh, very reminiscent, making me think of times when I lived out there and how peaceful it is. And if you're trying to go out embarking on this journey and trying to clear your head and find yourself, going to the desert is the way to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's what she does in the film. She lives in her van. We see some some uh things like her making food in the van we see her take a shit in like a five gallon bucket Uh, (laughs) yeah i forgot about that it's crazy real like they show that they show how how bad things can get and like there's one scene towards the beginning where it's freezing and she's she's gonna sleep in the van and it's you know somebody comes out from the gas station they you know they tell her like there's nothing wrong with you parking here we can't do anything but it's gonna be cold and we don't want you to freeze to death. She has to live through that. Yeah, she's just she's used to roughing it at this point. But uh, yeah, in one of those and one of those ladies she meets in the film, like I feel like she kind of gains a new perspective on things that she didn't kind of think about before. The lady that was kind of abrasive at first. I can't remember the character's name, but Swanky. Swanky. That's it. Yep. She like, yeah, their relationship in the film was super important, just like what happens. And Swanky got her own character arc, yeah. um, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I, their relationship was really cool. I feel like Swanky was a little older maybe and like told her some things, you know. She knew her life was going to be en- ending soon and she kind of passed on some knowledge to Fern, you know, because she knows Fern's going to be around for a while. Yeah, and I liked her story as well, having to do with Alaska, her final days, and the birds, and really sad. Like, I felt sad watching that part, but it was also really kind of awesome at the same time with her passing down some information or knowledge to Fern. And while she's embarking on her journey and finding her calling in life, you know, as she's getting older, too, making her question things in life and which path she has to take. So Swanky was definitely there to kind of point her in the right direction right yeah and i loved when swanky was talking to her and she said um she was basically mentioning like you know it's okay if i die now like there's been times in my life i never thought i'd experience there were things that happened things i saw and she's she describes one uh one one thing that was on her mind that she'd always thought about all these years and um yeah she said basically like i'm good with this i've made my peace I'm ready, you know, I'm ready if that yeah. happens. So, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, dealing with death and stuff in this movie, too. It's really real, too. You know, we both lost people, so, yeah. you know, it stays with you no matter what, and it's always heavy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's something that you're never expecting, you could predict. You know, it's going to happen one day, but it always happens sooner than you wish, you know, originally. And exactly. And while you're trying to overcome that and deal with stuff and you're trying to find your purpose in life and find your happiness. So after seeing the film, would you embark on a journey like that? Would you rough it in a van for or a RV like that? Absolutely. I could see it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, dude. I yeah. love the outdoors and I hate people. So it'd be perfect. You know, if Bodhi was grown up and everything was paid off and stuff, I'd be like, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would definitely do it. Absolutely. Move back to the desert. And travel from place to place and hang out in the RV and it would just live life. Peace. Camp and live, yeah. Camp and live. Just relax and enjoy the things in nature. Absolutely. I mean, we've we've done it before for a few nights. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> for all the listeners and viewers out there, we took an awesome road trip from Las Vegas up to Northern California and slept in my car for a few nights. <laughs> yeah. And we had some fun. Yeah, we slept on the beach in California and 
other places too. Yeah, it was a fun ride. Yeah, we. It would have been. It would have been more fun if I had a bigger car. Yeah. <laughs> did, did I have the Mazda or the Fiat? I don't remember. It was the Mazda, I think. Yeah, because the, the Mazda trying to go up the hill. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> too bad we. Too bad I didn't have the Fiat. I had more room in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that was still still an awesome trip, man. Yeah, it got us there still, man. We made it, and yeah, it's cool. We saw several movie locations. Yeah, from real, yep, and a bunch of cool stuff, the ocean and mountains and stuff like that. So we did that for a few days, just imagining doing that every day of your life. We were kind of nomads, you can say, but no, nah, it's not really because we had a bunch of money in our pockets and some yeah. supplies and some uh, luggage and everything. It wasn't yeah. exactly like being a nomad. Yeah, exactly. But we got to experience it for a few days. So yeah. I would definitely go back to that for sure. That'd be fun. It's a good way to live your life. Just no imagine how you feel like just not bringing any of your possessions and everything. Because that's a lot of what it is, like the excess stress it's from all your possessions and stuff. Like you're always yeah. like thinking about them one way or the other. So yeah. It weighs you down. Just think about leaving them behind, putting them in a storage locker. After I'm um, retired from IT and had you're, me not looking at a computer for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can things I can live without. Enjoy the little things in life. Cool thing about the desert is it's just like it's so quiet and it's awesome at night. Like yeah. nobody around you and just like super peaceful. That would be cool. Yeah, I, I was here for a little bit. I could kind of get that vibe how it's real quiet and real quiet at night. You probably it can be it. creepy too. Yeah, at the same time, creepy, but it's like peaceful. Yeah, not, if you don't get scared. <laughs> I didn't really know what to expect. I only saw like maybe half a trailer, maybe one trailer of this. Really great performances by Frances McDormand, per usual, one of my favorite actresses. Really great job directing Chloe Zhao and the cinematographer of the film as well. Really capture the beautiful atmosphere they're going for, the landscapes of the desert and what Fern's going through throughout the film. So I'm, with that being said, I'm going to give Nomad Land a four and a half out of five. Frances McDormand hair pieces. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with everything that you said, man. This is a this was a really, uh, really terrific film, really. I watched it. I didn't know anything going in and uh, I just watched the movie and it was it was like an experience, really. It's like one of those films that you'll remember, just especially the camera work, everything with the cinematography, like you mentioned, just how she framed everything, the wide landscape shots. Um, it just yeah, it just felt like like you mentioned like the environment was part of was another character was a big character in this film and fern obviously being the character that we focused on we got to see francis mcdormand knock another role out of the park she's been great in pretty much everything so i'm not surprised but this this one felt like it was real like she brought in some real stuff with her for this one um i wouldn't be surprised if she wins for the wins for her role in this film at all i think she's got to be you know at least in the top three. That's actress for sure. Yeah. I'd have to think about it. I had to put my list together, but yeah, she's definitely top three. And my pick would be Swanky for best supporting actress. <laughs> no, she was awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, could you imagine? Awesome. Yeah, I don't know how that works. If she's like real, did they have to get like their acting cards and all that? I wonder. I don't I, know. They, when I looked up the star, her name's Swanky playing Swanky. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, but hey. Give it to her. I thought she was really great. A lot of great supporting characters in this film. The Hagen Arcs, hers be one of them. Um, and this movie's just real. It's authentic. It feels like an authentic American story. Things we're dealing with as a country. People are going through every day. Some people are enjoying it. Some aren't. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of issues here. And it's very true to the novel. And it's definitely a movie you guys should check out. We highly recommend it. It's currently streaming on Hulu. Check it out, sports. Um, yeah, so I really love the film, and I am going to give Nomad Land. Hmm, let me think about this. this what are you going to give it? What is it? Uh, you know, it. what would I give it as far as technically what I saw on that night? Might change on a review. You know, maybe I'm hyping it up too much, but I thought it was pretty perfect. I want to say five out of five for me. I, don't, I didn't see five. any problems with it. For what I was trying to accomplish, it. It did that more. It hit you in the feels, man. You felt every part of this movie, and that's more than 95% of the movies we see. We don't really feel much. I mean, on the surface we do, but really. But this film is like, yeah, it just felt so real, and I was connected to it and loved it. So I'm going to give it a five out of five. Fern hair pieces. Whoa, where'd my hair go? Is it a nomad? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. So we want to thank you guys for following along with us here as we reviewed the the first great film I've seen all year. I guess technically this is a 2020 film, though. So yeah. technically it's from last year, but all the same, it's prob it's no, it's not probably. It is the best film I've seen this year. It's going to be a strong awards contender, and I imagine it's going to win some awards. Um, it was very real, and we both loved it. I think we loved Frances McDormand's performance. Um, we love. We always expect the best from her. She's just kick-ass performer. Absolutely, and the directing was great from uh, from the this director Chloe Zhao. Um, she did a great job. She directed the writer back in the day, and next, of course, she's going to have the Eternals. So the this, MCU. Yeah, the MCU. So yeah, they definitely watched this film and said, yeah, we have to get her for this. Um, so I can't wait to see what she does with that. I can only imagine the. The shots we're gonna get in that film with that the huge budget and everything. Yeah, I don't even know if she's using the same uh, cinematographer she works with. I'm assuming so. So it's gonna be interesting seeing a drama to a superhero movie. And the Eternals, I don't know anything about them, so I'm very excited for that. It's a huge cast, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'll probably watch one trailer and just not watch anymore and check out the movie and be blown away. I know. Me too. I just want to see a little bit. I just want a little tease. Give me a couple of pictures and I'm already stoked. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's fun not knowing like somebody, you know, they're coming in with brand new people. So like the stakes are high. They got to nail it. So chances are you're going to see something badass. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking forward to that. We're looking forward to a lot of things here in 2021. And that's uh, just like we just did here. We look forward to reviewing a lot more movies and TV shows to come, so stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll be reviewing, doing our review for the next uh, WandaVision, uh, episode eight, I believe, and there's one more after this. So we will do the finale, obviously, next time after these. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to I can't wait to talk about uh, both of those episodes, seven and eight. And I can't wait to uh, eventually get into Falcon and Winter Soldier, because I think we're going to do, well, we should do that too. Yeah, I think yeah. Be six episode. So, yeah, we'll have to cover those. Yeah, we'll do the Disney Plus shows. So stay tuned for that. we got a lot of videos coming on our YouTube channel. But in the future, yeah, we got excuse me, we got the Falcon Winter Soldier, and then we have Loki in June. Mighty Ducks is coming out in March, I believe. So we definitely got to check that out, review it. Disney Plus is putting out a lot of good content that we can talk about. So really excited for the next three months. We're going to be back here reviewing a lot of stuff for your eyes. I have a good idea here on the spot. Like, uh how about we announce the next Cinefellas giveaway for the, the people that uh, check it out? And then there'll be a nice little secret in there if somebody watches the video and then they can see that there's a contest yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I got this in the mail the other day. Rick and Morty. Uh, seasons one through four. Digital code. Damn. I haven't seen the show. I would definitely check it I out. I haven't either. I kind of want to watch it. So, uh, I mean, I'll have the Blu-rays here anyway. But, yeah. Let's give the digital code for Rick and Morty the first four seasons. Uh, first. Let's see. Yeah, so all you have to do to enter in this one is just, uh, uh, what should we say? Just What's, comment what you think about Rick and Morty, or if you haven't watched it yet, like what, you, what you're expecting maybe. Tell us something about it, like if you're already a fan. Something about Rick and Morty. Something about Rick and Morty that you really love about the show why you're a fan in the first place. For guys that have not seen the show, let us know why we should watch it and your favorite thing about it. And we'll announce one random winner in two weeks on Thursday, March 11th. That's right, you wild rascals. Doing a little <laughs> surprise fellas giveaway here, Rick and Morty. Four seasons. So let us know the answer to our question. We'll be back here in a few weeks to announce the winner. Woo! Man, we're wild. We're getting wild tonight. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> My man. Treat. Trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> Easy they bust up. So, so until the next wild Cinefellas review from me and my old uncle uh, Logan over here. We're going to get tonight. The night is still young. We might even record something else after this. Probably not, but you can only imagine. <laughs> so until the next Cinefellas review, you boys don't get too wild out there because we are getting wild for you. Cheese! Cheese.